Sam, will you? Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Would you like to flash your lights just to confirm that you can hear me? That's very reassuring, thank you. Uh, welcome, my name's Chris Martin, and I'm the team rector of the Golden Cap Benefice. And uh, next to me is another Chris. This is Chris, who is Chris Woodman, is the pastor at My Major's Baptist Church. Popular. I think there's some Baptists over there. Yes. <laughs> and uh, together, as part of the churches together in Lyme Regis, we are delighted to welcome you to what I think must be Lyme Regis' first driving carol service. <laughs> so thank you very, very much indeed for coming. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping to begin with. First of all, to say that you are allowed to sing outdoors. So when the carols are being played by the lovely Lime Regis Town Band here, please do open your windows so that we can hear you sing. There'll be a brief line of introduction into the carols, and then we'll get going. At the end, please could you not try to move your car until you're told to by one of the stewards, otherwise it'll get very chaotic. We are aware that because you're in your car with the engine switched off, it does get quite cold quickly, so it won't be a long service. So without further ado, let's begin with a prayer together. Gracious Lord, we thank you that we are able to meet together in this way. And as we hear the story of the first Christmas again in word and song, Shine your light into our hearts, we pray, that we may behold the glory of the one called Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Our first carol, Once in Royal David City.
reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6 to 7. The prophecy of the Messiah's birth. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and for ever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38 and it's the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this, his word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even as Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The third reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
And a fourth reading, also from the Gospel of Luke, is chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. They hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had, had they, which was just as they'd been told. Okay, I've got a question I want to ask you. Some of you are going to find this a difficult question. Okay, the question is, how clean is your car on the inside? Okay, now if you think, you're looking inside your car and thinking to yourself, yeah, it looks pretty clean. I'd like you to flash your lights, please. Okay, there's not many lights <laughs> being flashed. Okay, in that case then, if you think that your car on the inside more resembles a dustbin on wheels, perhaps you could honk your horn. I noticed my wife was honking uh, her horn there as well. Uh, I'm glad that it's not just me that sometimes has a dirty car inside, because once, when my three daughters were very small, we were about to go away for a few days on holiday. And before I go away on holiday, I always like to clean out the inside of my car. I don't know if that's a man thing or not, but I just like to go away on holiday in a clean car. So I got the vacuum cleaner ready and the hose, and I started to, before I started to, to vacuum, I was just clearing out all the, you know, the rubbish from the doors and the compartments, you know, things like empty crisp packets and Smarties and empty water bottles and hair bands and broken pens, you know, the sort of stuff, all kinds of things. And then, to my astonishment, to my utter horror, in the driver's door compartment, I found a fish finger. <laughs> Now, how it got there is a long and involved story that you're going to have to ask my wife about. But she reckoned it had been there for at least six months. And judging by the smell of it, I think she was right. So those of you who honked your horns, I wonder what you've got lurking in your cars. I wonder if anyone can top a fish finger. Honk your horn if you can. Oh, great, okay, so it's just me that's disgusting, right. But you know, the discovery of a fish finger in the driver's door of my car is not the most astonishing discovery that I've ever made in my life. No, the most astonishing discovery I ever made in my life was revealed to me at Christmas time several years ago. And it's this, that if God really can be found in the person of Jesus, if God really can be found in flesh and blood, then God can be found in my flesh and my blood and in your flesh and in your blood. What an amazing place for God to hide. God chooses human hearts to be his Bethlehem, his temple. You are the place where God chooses to be born and to live. You know, after the very difficult year that so many people have had, some have been asking quite understandably, where is God? Where is God? And it's a good question, and at times I've asked it too. But God is not up there or over there. God is among us here and dwells within our hearts. The infant Jesus is the sign for all of us that God likes to live within human beings. 
and within the whole of his creation. So heaven forbid that you should ever find a fish finger living in your car. But this Christmas time, may heaven allow you to discover afresh that the God who created the universe, the God who flung stars into space, lives within you and around you. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Chris is going to lead us in some prayers now. Well, God is present with us here. That's what he tells us. That's not our idea. So let's communicate with him right now. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for being able to gather here, have the technology available, have the means by which we've done this. Father, we come, as has already been mentioned, at the end of a very different year for us. And here in mind, we just want to raise our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers to you and give you thanks for every single care worker, for every single person in a hospital, in some research laboratory, in some sort of policy-making institution, um, governing, Lord, that has helped to promote to save lives. We thank you, Father, for this. We pray for your comfort, God of all compassion, for everybody who suffered, everybody who suffered loss, everybody who suffered, whether it's the loss of a loved one, or a job, or a place to live, whatever it might be. Father, we know that there are people suffering, and we want to raise our voices to you and ask that your compassion and your provision would be made available. Lord, you tell us that we can do all things through you who gives us strength. That when wisdom is required to seek your face, the wisdom will be provided. We thank you for the way through, the breakthroughs that have been made, the, the speed at which um, vaccinations have come forth. And we pray for the rollout of that as well, Lord, on an international, national, local scale.
just to say a quick um, few thank yous before we go. First of all, I'd like you to honk your horn in thanks to the Lyme Regis Town Band for playing today. And for the Town Mayor for our first reading today, being involved in today's service, please honk your horn for the Town Mayor. For letting us have the car park today, Please honk your horn for the Lyme Regis Town Council and Councillors. For those wonderful people in high-vis jackets, our stewards for today. And this wouldn't have happened if you hadn't booked and come, so toot your horns for yourselves. And now let's have a final blessing. So now may God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love, this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for coming, and we all wish you a very happy and peaceful Christmas. Please stay in your cars now until you're directed by a steward. Thank you. Reverend Martin, could, you, could they do one more honk and flash their lights? We've been asked to have one more honk with a flashing of lights, please. <laughs> The stewards are now uh, starting to move people. Just stay where you are again until the stewards tell you. And uh, thank you very much.